Hello traders, this is Ilya Spivak, currency strategist with Daily FX, and we'll be looking at the week ahead and trying to gauge where financial markets are likely headed. Before we get started, if you guys could please type into the chat box, let me know if you can hear me, let me know if the video is coming through okay for you and we will get started. Okay, looks like we're good to go. So, the overarching theme for uh, this week uh, concerns the U.S. dollar, uh, and that is, of course, not sur not surprising. Certainly, shouldn't be uh, after last week's fireworks, and especially uh, this week, uh, we are likely to see these kinds of major themes really dominate the spotlight because we really don't have a tremendous amount of fundamental flashpoints on the calendar. There's certainly a lot of news flow, but uh, this is largely news flow of the uh, sort of second tier variety, if you will. And uh, as we figure out what is likely to be uh, the focus uh, amongst these releases, the overwhelming sense is that the, uh, we are going to see really how these more second level announcements fit in with the broader narrative rather than uh, watch as major announcements set the narrative and establish the trajectory. And of course the US dollar is a major part of this conversation uh, as I say after last week's fireworks it appears as though uh, we have now had not only a break out of this falling wedge with the bottom marked by a morning star candlestick pattern as we've been talking about for the past several weeks it appears that we have also cleared the series of lower highs and lower lows established from this swing top back in January suggesting that the US dollar may have really turned a corner and may have begun the next leg of its longer term rising trend and if you take a look at a monthly chart here you can see clearly what I'm talking about you can see the US dollar has been trending higher basically since 2011 the latest leg of this move started back here in mid 2014 if you look on a weekly uh, chart you can see a little bit cleaner what's going on here with this sort of being the first leg, this being the acceleration, we've seen a bit of consolidation here recently, but it looks like after we tested this bottom down here, the greenback has once again made what looks like the beginning of upside resumption. And this is of course not surprising. Last week we heard that um, the Fed is confused at the market's uh, apparent ignoring of all of their hawkish signaling over recent weeks and months and stressing that the markets are underappreciating the probability of a rate hike in June or July. Markets of course immediately snapped to and the US dollar soared. 
More importantly, the probabilities for a June hike went from 4% to close to 30. And the probabilities for a July hike are now better than even, 53%. Whereas before, you had to go all the way out to December before seeing better than even odds for a rate hike. Now the key question obviously is will skepticism return or is this for real this time? Are the markets really and truly going to price this in? And will the greenback continue to push higher on this basis? Now Obviously, economic data is a major component in this regard, and uh, we have some of that this week. Although, again, we do not have a tremendous amount. We have uh, market PMIs with the first one, the manufacturing one, coming across the wires today. Expectations are for a bit of an improvement from 50.8 to 51. On Tuesday, we're going to have new home sales. On Wednesday, the trade balance report, services and composite PMIs, as well as the house price index. On Thursday, durable goods orders, pending home sales and jobless claims. On Friday, the second revision of first quarter GDP numbers which is expected to show that output grew faster than initially expected with the annualized growth rate registering nine, at nine tenths of a percent versus five tenths in the first estimate. The final re revision of uh, May's University of Michigan consumer confidence numbers also on the docket there but the GDP number likely to overshadow. So important outcomes certainly exist. The GDP one is an important one. The durable goods one is an important one. The PMIs matter. But something of a uh, of a quiet calendar relatively speaking. So we don't have a non-farm payrolls release, for example. We don't have uh, an FOMC meeting or some such thing. What we do have, however, is another busy docket of Federal Reserve officials' commentary. And this is very, very important because this has really been a major contention point in what the Fed said in minutes from April's policy meeting last week. It actually berated investors for having ignored what the Fed had been saying since March. Shamed them almost for saying, haven't we said enough? Haven't we told you what, where we're steering? Why are you not listening? Now, obviously, in the aftermath of such strong rhetoric, comments from Fed officials will now be scrutinized to a significant extent. And we have some interesting ones this week. Speaking today, we have St. Louis Fed President Jim Bullard, as well as Philly Fed President Harker. These are policymakers we haven't heard from recently. Uh, Bullard uh, has been somewhat hawkish since late last year and into 2016, so he's probably going to be on board with uh, the recent hawkish comments from John Williams from San Francisco and Dennis Lockhart from Atlanta Fed branches. Uh, in fact, Williams is also speaking today, but we generally know where he stands at this point. We're also going to have uh, the president of the Minneapolis Fed, Neil Kashkari, he's going to speak. 
we have uh, of the Dallas Fed Robert Kaplan, who's been kind of uh, e- even handed, including in his comments last week. So we'll see if he ratchets up his rhetoric. The chair herself, Janet Yellen, is speaking. Her comments are due up on Friday. And uh, we'll see if uh, the conversation is uh, going to really focus on... uh, current monetary policy or if it will be mostly academic. She is, after all, speaking at Harvard University, so it's possible that uh, this is going to be less so pertinent for the current situation, but we shall see. Probably the more interesting bit on the docket is actually commentary from Governor Jerome Powell. Generally speaking, the Board of Governors, outside of Vice Chair Fisher and uh, Chair Yellen herself, have been somewhat more dovish than the, the presidents of the regional Fed branches. Uh, governors Lael Brainerd, Dan Tarullo, and of course Jerome Powell, they've all been a little bit more on the dovish end of things. If their remarks, and in this case uh, Governor Powell's remarks, start to fall in with the hawkish tone that we've seen elsewhere, that would suggest that opinions on the FOMC are starting to converge. And they're starting to converge in the direction of a rate hike in the relatively near term. That would potentially go a long way in boosting the US dollar. Another major theme that we have at work here is the looming Brexit referendum. And this is something that um, obviously represents a major risk. We heard uh, from the comments made at this weekend's G7 meeting uh, of uh, the key economies, uh, finance ministers, and central bank governors, that that the Brexit situation is a major, major concern. This is, of course, not surprising to anyone, I'm sure. But as we get closer and closer to this referendum, which is coming up on June the 23rd, the amount of attention that's going to be paid to what is being shown in the polls, particularly as they appear to be widening, will be very important. And indeed, the polls appear to be skewing. So, as of the latest numbers, the Remain camp is looking reasonably strong at 47 47 and a half percent the leave camp at 40 and a half so the gap seems to be widening when we were talking last week the two sides were relatively even but there appears to be increasingly a skew That skew helped to drive the British pound higher last week, and I'm still short Euro Euro pound from around here, 78.76, so right around down here. And uh, I hit my initial target down here at uh, 77.35 on uh, this move down. I'm still holding the second half of this position with a stop at the break-even level, looking for the polls to continue to narrow, looking for a consensus in favor of a vote to remain within the EU to emerge. 
Whether it emerges or not, though, um, we shall see. But whatever happens, the closer we get, the more acute the market's attention, and the less heavy event risk on the docket, the more attention is going to be paid to these larger, more macro level narratives. And indeed, this is what we are seeing. So watching these, um, these polls will be an important thing, most likely, in the week ahead. Scanning uh, the economic calendar here, um, we do have a bit of event risk. Today we're going to be looking at um, the preliminary set of May's Eurozone PMI figures. The likelihood that this is going to mean something in particular for the Euro seems unlikely because, of course, uh, the ECB is fairly locked into place as far as... Uh, policy is concerned, so we're probably not going to get a meaningful response from uh, the single currency itself. However, taken collectively, the Eurozone is, of course, the world's largest economy. And so, keeping that in mind, it is important to consider that what we have here is also a risk sentiment component. So if the numbers come in better, as is expected, and indeed Eurozone economic data has increasingly outperformed relative to consensus forecasts over recent months, if we get an upside su uh, surprise here, on top of bets for a better result, then we may very well end up with something that is risk supportive. So uh, while the impact on the euro isn't likely to be profound, uh, the impact on currencies like the Aussie and the Kiwi may be noteworthy. We could see some gains there. And, and indeed, you can see here, even as uh, risk sentiment unravels in Asia here, with stocks moving lower, risk-sensitive uh, currencies are actually on the upswing. You can see the Aussies higher on the day. Uh, the, the Kiwi also stronger. So the tone seems to be generally supportive. We'll see, though, how much follow-through this uh, risk on dynamic has, though, when Fed speak starts to cross the wires later in the day. On Tuesday, not a whole lot besides the uh, aforementioned U.S. data. However, we are going to get a speech from RBA Governor Glenn Stevens. We have seen that uh, speculation about the possibility of another RBA cut in the near term has come off some, and that is, of course, significant. We'll see if uh, the governor does more to encourage this or if he actually... Uh, comes off a little bit more dovish. Arguably, something a little bit more dovish would clash more so with the very recent dynamics as opposed to the other way around. And so, we might have scope here perhaps for a downside surprise, but that seems unlikely given what we've heard from uh, the latest RBA minutes, and if indeed uh, the rhetoric suggests that the latest rate uh, cut 
earlier this month was actually a one-off rather than the start of an easing cycle, the Aussie may very well bounce. And indeed, this flattening on um, RSI as well as this shooting star or hammer candle they suggest that perhaps that is a possibility. On Wednesday, we are looking at uh, German IFO survey numbers, gauges of uh, uh, business confidence. And again, although these are not likely to be very significant for the Euro itself, the sentiment component ought to be kept in mind. Expectations here for a bit of an improvement, and if it is a greater improvement than uh, is expected once again, given the recent performance of Eurozone news flow, we could very well see some sort of a pro-sentiment response. Later in the day on Wednesday, we have what is really the biggest bit of event risk this week, the monetary policy announcement from the Bank of Canada. And here, what we are looking for is less so a change in policy. This is not exactly on the horizon, not exactly expected, uh, but more so the language and the rhetoric. Now, We've uh, been reading about the wildfires that have derailed crude production in Canada recently, so that it'll be interesting to hear about that. Uh, it'll be int interesting to hear about uh, the transition from resource-driven growth to other sectors, which is something that... Uh, uh, Governor Stephen Polos has talked about before. It'll be interesting to see if uh, the central bank sees scope for knock-on effects from a recovery in U.S. performance starting to feed through. Because, of course, 80% or so of Canada's uh, export flow goes directly into the U.S. So, a variety of things here uh, really to inform whether the near-term bias is uh, basically wait-and-see mode or if in fact we are starting to get some kind of inclinations toward potentially thinking about withdrawing stimulus or in fact actually going the other way considering the hit uh, that uh, the recent fires have had on performance. So, a number of things to look at here, but again, mostly evaluating by way of uh, rhetoric rather than actual policy. Now, I am uh, still long dollar cat. I got in at uh, 130.60. I'm looking for 133.12 as the initial objective. So, this is something I am still holding. A reversal in crude oil, uh, given its uh, perceived relationship with the Canadian dollar, that may help to drive this forward. And a reversal in crude oil would really be primarily the result of the potential swell in Fed rate hike speculation and the subsequent negative response from sentiment to that swell. So that'll be interesting to monitor. But we will have to, of course, balance that with any uh, positive impact on sentiment from things like Eurozone PMIs and German IFO numbers and so forth. So it will be something of a tug of war this week. Now, looking at crude oil, while we're on the subject, you'll notice that um, the price is setting higher highs, but RSI is diverging, and so 
signs of ebbing upside momentum appear to be making themselves known although of course we do not have confirmation as of yet if we do have a firming of um, Fed policy bets we're also likely to see momentum start to pick up again in gold you can see looking at uh, ATR measured volatility we have declined to the weakest levels on volatility since basically early February so momentum has eased quite a bit we could see that pick back up and indeed uh, accompany a move lower if indeed uh, Fed policy bets really start to swell. On Thursday we're going to have the aforementioned US economic data but also a revised set of UK GDP numbers while potentially interesting from a sentiment perspective I suspect they're going to fall by the wayside attention wise because uh, investors are going to be preoccupied with the Brexit situation which may tip UK growth one way or another and so these numbers may be largely moot and then on Friday of course as we said before US GDP numbers are in the spotlight and that is the week ahead you guys have any questions by all means ask I see we d we don't have any questions at this moment so if we do not then we can wrap things up but if you do have questions uh, certainly ask we have a bit of time uh, where we could answer a few All right. One guest is asking, uh, do you think gold will drop below 1200 with the US dollar going higher? Well, let's take a look. So, here's gold. Dropping below 1200 really wouldn't be much of a, much of a tall order. We would have to clear this support. That's about 1237.23 on the rising channel. And then we're basically within striking distance of the 200 level. So in other words, if we were to resume the downtrend in gold, getting back to 1200 really wouldn't be much of a stretch. right? We've been much lower recently. In fact, as recently as uh, December of last year, we were below 1100 and closer to about 1050. So is it feasible sure absolutely absolutely um, is it going to happen necessarily we don't know I I certainly am more so inclined to think that it will than not because uh, the markets have been under appreciating the Fed's conviction in raising rates and the Fed is very clearly telling them that they've been wrong to do so so there is still scope to reprice monetary policy here and I do think that um, doing so will be gold negative because gold as a non-interest bearing asset and inherently a anti-fiat alternative to the US dollar will fundamentally suffer if the prospects for Fed tightening firm. Before this is an actionable position though obviously we would need to start breaking some of these support levels before we can say anything with certainty. So 
before I would be talking about 1200 I would be talking about a break of this channel support and then after we get that confirmed on a daily closing basis then a conversation about 1200 has scope to be had all right unfortunately that was all the time that we had for questions uh, thank you for joining me as always you can follow up with me via Twitter with any further questions at Ilya Spivak as you can see right here also if you would like to sign up for my email distribution list to receive my analysis directly here is a link right in the chat box where you can do that thank you everybody for joining me Good luck out there this week. Take care.